cover to cover every single day. Um, joining me right now, though, speaking of Lamert Park, Africa, USA, Africa Town, I should say, um, he's an organizer, protector, provider, liberator of Black Los Angeles. He's a co-founder of the Africa Town Coalition and Africa Town Enterprise, an executive director of the People's Juneteenth 2022 Billion Godson, good morning. Good morning. How you doing, Dominique? I'm pretty good. I'm blessed, all things considered. I I heard thunder in the sky this morning and saw a few raindrops, and it did. The thunder felt like poetic justice. It felt like uh, the heavens were yelling at us, going, "L.A., get it together." And you know, it's funny. I have a friend. I have a lot of friends in the Bay Area, Billion, and they're saying, well, the whole world is laughing at L.A. right now. They're mocking you because of the crisis in the city council. And my response was, let them mock. At least we know where our racists are. Y'all have them. You just haven't identified right. them yet. Right. How are you feeling? I know um, some Africa town uh, folks were down at City Hall yesterday as the people showed up and showed out demanding the resignation of all, all three of those council members. Right, right. Yeah, we had some people go down there to um, just raise up our voice and, and you know, make the same demand everyone else is making that the three council members who were called on tape resign immediately. So, um I myself didn't make it, but I heard it was a large turnout, people from all across the city. Yeah, um, people were s streaming live, and there were folks in front of the city hall, and there were people inside the chambers. And I, I do believe that until those council members step down, there will not be a peaceful city council meeting. Right. I don't. You know, maybe not the turnout of, of yesterday, but we'll see. Because it seemed like it was people from all walks of life, as you correctly point out. There were a lot of Latinos there. Right. A lot of Latinos and a lot of African Americans. And uh, I loved the shirts, um, you know, the blacks are here. Right, right. Um, and, you know, because of part, part of the remarks that were heard on tape were, of course, um, Kevin DeLeon saying, that we as black people always make it seem like there's a lot more of us than there are, that we have this Wizard of Oz effect. W to which I say, some of us got jobs, mm -hmm. and just because we're not there on any given day doesn't mean we're not standing with the folks that are there. Right. Apparently you missed the entire 2020 if you think it's just a handful of us showing up and yelling. And even when it's only a few, we're still that powerful to where we can make change with just a few. So whether it's 25 or 250, you know, we make it happen. Right. The other thing is, like, did you miss Dr. Martin Luther King, the March on Washington? Did you miss Malcolm X? Did you miss all of 2020? What do you mean? It's, I mean, yes, it's true. There are sometimes protests, as you say, with a small cadre of folks making a lot of noise. But those people represent are representing many of us. Right. And it's, you know, I, I maybe I've said this too much, but it's the work that our ancestors have done and that uh, some of us have done that allows you to sit on that dais right. at City Hall. Right. Yeah. Right. OK, so I um, I jumped ahead because there's just a lot of emotion, a lot of energy running around. When we come forward, Billion, I want to talk about what is Africa Town uh, Coalition? What is Africa Town Enterprises? And we are broadcasting from Lamert Park, Africa Town, USA. Yes. So um, why here? What do you have going on? And of course, er most people know is a festival like almost every day is a festival in Lamert Park at this point. So what's coming up? And, uh, of course, we're taking your your phone calls. We'll, we'll take a look at some of these other local issues that perhaps have been ignored and continue our conversation about the way forward right now with the city council crisis. It's KBLA Talk 1580. We, we are amplifying black and progressive voices 24-7. And I'm um, here with uh, Billion Godson, co-founder of Africa Town Coalition, Africa Town Enterprise. You're welcome to get in this conversation. I want to talk about what is your organization? What is the purpose? A lot of folks have heard of it, um, but maybe aren't clear on what it does, what y'all are. 
definitely centered in the neighborhood we call Lamert Park. I know you don't love that name. You prefer the name Africatown. So talk about what um, what you guys do and, and, and why. So in 2016, um, an organization that we had previously started known as Blackton 365, we met with Kevin Warden Price, who at that time had the Black Don Empowerment Network, and we began to speak on the fact that we didn't just want to respond after police had uh, killed one of our people. We wanted to be more proactive and have a presence throughout the city to um, uh, prevent, if possible, um, those situations from happening. So initially we came together with that, and then um, around October we looked inside of the actual park right here in Lamert and saw there were about 50 people sleeping in the park. So we began a food program. Um, this month actually makes the sixth year of our weekly food program to both identify who the people were, identify their um, specific needs. We began going into local meetings and um, we heard the tone against certain people in our community wasn't um, positive, whether they were unhoused, whether they were street vendors, um, people with mental health issues. So our thing was to advocate for support and resources more so than criminalizing people. And we began to come up with a, a five point um, um, initiative that we've put forward. Um, first being ending the genocide against black people in this country. Second, um, ending the gentrification and displacement of black people in this country. Third, ending the um, modern day prison enslavement of our people at disproportionate rates. Third, um, building a support network of um, um, resources and finances for black businesses. And finally, building up a, a black governing body. We feel that a lot of the um, representation, be it Republican or Democrat, does not represent us. So we are, um, part of a movement of, of black people rising up to now address our needs and concerns. So how does that look? Is that another, is that, that a third party or is it just navigating whatever's going on and uh, advocating based on what's best for black people rather than on a party line? I believe we're headed towards a new party. Um, here in LA, we have, um, some of the strongest organizations, um, some people are saying in history, we got Black Lives Matter LA in 2020. They were um, um, identified as the most um, powerful movement in human history. We have um, downtown Crenshaw. They, they are now a national voice um, in their effort to buy the Crenshaw Mall. They raised over $115 million. Um, we saw that didn't work out, but now they are... Um, uh, saving the community, so to speak. We also have um, Gorilla RX, which is the first black woman-owned cannabis dispensary. But our sister Kika also um, led the charge for um, um, the legalization of cannabis and how it would affect our community. So with that, um, we believe there are enough people um, for us to come together and either try to um, affect the, the current parties or just go ahead and develop our own new party. Well, um, you must be, I mean, given the fact that, let me put it this way, I'm a Democrat, but I consider myself the cutting edge, the progressive edge of the party, which means I don't have to slavishly um, agree with everything they say and do. I feel like it's my job to push them towards what's best for my people. But I, there's no fealty, meaning, you know, if we had a viable, and by viable I mean with the ability to win and not just um, do what Ralph Nader did and hand victories to Republicans, then of course I'd be down. But here's the thing, for you as a person that is um, actively not feeling either Republicans or Democrats, how did this situation in the L.A. City Council where we hear the behind closed doors machinations, right, of three very powerful leaders in L.A., Latino leaders, actively, and then and then the labor leader, uh, Mr. Herrera, who's already stepped down, actively planning on ways to weaken black political power. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. How did it affect you when you heard that? What did you think? Did it move you in a way, or were you... 
uh, were you just like, yeah, okay, that's what I already thought? I mean, what was the impact of, or what is the ongoing impact of this to you, on you? For me, it was like, thank you. Um, just from monitoring these individuals and others that we have not yet um, been exposed on the council, but from monitoring these individuals and the policies that have been coming forward from them, um, you know, the policies in this city are racist. So, um, yeah, for me, it was like, thank you. Finally, we get to identify. But it was the content of some of the things they were saying that kind of exposed the history of why um, black people have been redlined in this city, why black people are disproportionately arrested in this city, why black people make up the largest percentage of those who are currently unhoused. Um, when they spoke on things like um, um, sabotaging the uh, redistricting process, when they spoke of of which black official to put into position to use as their puppet, um, these are things we've seen affecting our community for a long time and a lot of us have kind of speculated um based off of our experience with these individuals but now it's like you know whoever decided to make that recording and then finally release it it's like thank you you know now we know you know what i feel like it's it could be a trojan horse i mean i'm glad we know what we know i'm glad we know what we know i am a hundred percent with every with people saying those council members need to step down. And I don't mean a leave of absence. I mean, step down, go away, stop taking one dime of one penny of taxpayers' money. But I don't know. The, I, need, I need to know who recorded it. Right. I need to know what their goals are. I need to know what else do they have. And I don't think there's been enough conversation about that. Here's why I say that. Clearly, whoever recorded it was targeting the L.A. County Federation of Labor, probably Ron Herrera. Um, now, Ron Herrera sat there and he laughed and he, you know, commented and he definitely was in the wrong. But as far as the relationship of labor and black L.A., mm -hmm. he was actually decent. And in terms of funding candidates, um, backing up programs within. And the guy that is replaced him now, Tom Davis, is over IATSE, which is an entertainment union, which is, I don't know the numbers, but they're overwhelmingly not black or brown. Right. They're overwhelmingly white. We got to see how that goes. Um, I also think if I'm, t if I'm targeting Ron Herrera, why am I doing that? We know that all the Democratic politicians meet with him. All of them, not just the Latino ones, all of them go there. They're seeking support for this or that, or they're pledging their support to whatever they're doing to labor. Labor and the Democrats work together. So uh, is it someone that wants to weed out different Democratic politicians? Is it someone that's or it could be family drama. You know, as always, we know we always have family members. All of us have family members that want that for one reason or another want to bring us down or. It could be conservative elements within the labor movement who think that someone like Ron Herrera is too far to the left. Why would they think that? Because of his, because he's supported movements, because uh, he's been lobbied to take uh, police out of the House of Labor. Because if you look at it, police and fire unions are both supporting Rick Caruso, and yet... Uh, the L.A. Federation of Labor had, had seems to be putting support behind Congresswoman Bass. Uh, the labor movement, we have seen a shift to the, to the right. We have seen this advent of MAGA Republicans. Now, it's possible it could be a staff member of the Fed that has beef or feels like, okay, I want to expose this racism among these council members. That's a possibility, but it's a thin possibility because of the resources that and the wherewithal that it would take to bug and listen remember the LA County Federation of Labor said there were several offices and conference rooms that they felt were compromised well first of all how do they know that did they find recording devices how did they know that why do they think there are several offices and conference rooms and if they were who has the resources to do that the rumor is that it's one of the council members that was on tape that did it 
Why would they do that? And who does this benefit? I, I don't I don't think it it benefits Congresswoman Bass. I don't I don't think it benefits uh, I don't know. We we have to see. But I also, if you think back to that time, that was a year ago, a lot of people may have assumed that Kevin DeLeon would be going up against Caruso, yeah. right? Because a lot of people felt that DeLeon has all these Latino votes. He's going to beat Congresswoman Bass. That's not what ended up happening. Right. But maybe they were thinking, if we have something on him, I'm 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 speculating right now, but I'm just saying, I think yes, it's it. We have to deal with the fallout. We have to get we have to get things back to being able to get work done by getting rid of those racist council members and the policies, as you point out. But I just feel like we also have to be having a conversation about how did this happen and why did it happen and what is going to happen next. Because surely there are more tapes if all of these different areas were compromised. Right, right. As um, we've studied gentrification, um, we see it's basically like a neo-colonization. And as we mm. study colonization, we know one of the things that um, white supremacy does is make sure people don't get stabilized. So... For a few years, as we've gone down to the council office, we've told a lot of the um, council members they would sooner than later be disposed of because um, what we see really is a, a takeover of our communities, more so from the white communities. And we know um, a lot of Latinos have been pushed out in front of us, um, be it in the labor places, uh, a lot of the businesses, even up and down Crenshaw, you go into and you no longer see black employees, you see mostly um, Latinx workers. So at a certain point, we know they too would have to be destabilized for white folks to come back again. This is speculating, not um, saying it's 100%, but they too would have to be destabilized in order for um, that uh, transition to happen more effectively. And we know these three council seats are, are very powerful seats. So now, once they step down, what happens? And that opens up a whole nother um, ball game. But as it plays out, we'll probably get more pieces to the puzzle to know exactly why this happened. Yeah, I, I assume we will. Um, Liz Schuler is the head of the national um, AFL-CIO is, has indicated that there is an investigation. So I, I'm sure I'm sure we'll find out more. Interesting points, um, Billion. I hope we'll get some information, I know we will, from uh, Councilmember Marquise Harris-Dawson, who's joining me in the third hour of the show today, as far as the procedural piece, you know, what can be done. Uh, because I don't think, I, I know there's no formal way for the council to force a uh, council member out other than suspending them like they did with Ridley Thomas. I know yesterday, um, one of the videos I saw said there was a motion. Do you know what that motion was or if it went through yesterday? There were a number of motions, um, and we're going to, yeah, we'll talk with um, Council Member um, Marquise Harris-Dawson about that. There were a number of motions that are meant to stop something like this from happening again, um, and we can go through those after uh, news traffic and sports um, they were not able to go through because they would have needed to have a quorum. They would have needed to have the council there to be able to vote. Uh, and it was too too much uh, protest going on. And that's kind of the point that I think a lot of activists were making, which is until they get those three out of there, how can we do city business? Right. How can we pass anything? I mean, aside from just addressing this, keeping city business moving this is a huge city they have to step down or else how can we function all right now we're headed to the elections just a few weeks away yeah uh, the timing is very fishy billion godson is here i'm dominique de prima this is kbla talk 15